Hello, my name is Dr. Roderick L. Rowe, and today I will be talking to you about Mendelian inheritance. Complete dominance is observed when only one of the original parents are seen after the P generation cross. In this image, we have the parental purple flower being crossed with a parental white flower. The immediate offspring is the F1 generation and we no longer see the white flower. This is an example of complete dominance. A subsequent cross of the F1 progeny would yield the recessive phenotype again. So in the F2 generation we see that we have three purple flowers and one white flower. So the white flower ends up reappearing but only in the F2 progeny. What are the F1 offspring from these crosses. I will provide the answer for the first one. When you cross two heterozygote individuals, you will get a one fourth big A big A, two fourth big A little a, and one fourth little a little a. You should be able to do question two and three on your own. Conclusions from Mendel's experiments. Mendel drew four important conclusions. The first conclusion we will discuss is that traits are inherited as discrete units called alleles. Alternative forms of genes are called alleles. They account for variations in inherited characters. The example of the purple versus white pea plant flower is a really good example of different alleles. In the image below, we're looking at a homologous pair of chromosomes. This pair has one chromosome that was given to this plant from its father and one chromosome that was given to this plant by its mother. Notice that at one specific location on the chromosome you have a gene sequence that codes for flower color. In this example these sequences are different. The one on the top is the allele for the purple flower and the one on the bottom is the allele for the white flower. We could also draw that out to look something like this you have a heterozygous individual but they express the purple color but on the molecular level their chromosomes would look like this they would have one allele that is big P and one allele that is little p when that individual goes through meiosis they will, will produce 50 percent of their alleles would have a big P and 50% of their alleles would have a little p. Mendel had a second very important conclusion. He suggested that all organisms inherited two copies of each gene. Mendel drew a third very important conclusion. He thought that out of the two copies 
of each gene that an organism inherits that they might be different. If they are different, that individual would have a dominant allele and a recessive allele. That individual could just have both dominant alleles or the individual could have both recessive allele, but they could differ. The recessive allele is not noticeable in the presence of the dominant allele. In this image, we're looking at a homozygous individual. This homozygous individual has two recessive alleles. They could also have two dominant alleles. They are both called homozygous. The one on the bottom is heterozygous. Heterozygous means you have different alleles. The fourth very important conclusion that Mendel drew is referred to as the law of segregation. Mendel's principle of segregation stated that pairs of alleles separate during gamete formation and that those gametes would fuse to create a zygote. That is when the pairs would reunite again. Gametes carry only one allele for each inherited characteristic. So for example, the sperm cell will only have either a big A or a little a. The egg would only have a big A or a little a. But the zygote, which is a union between sperm and egg, it will have both. In this slide, we have a spermatogonia. This is the original cell that produces the sperm. The spermatogonium is deep within the testicles. As you can see, it is attached to the interstitial cells or the late dig cells. This spermatogonia is going to go through a mitotic division and produce a clone. One of those cells will then go through meiosis one and two to produce four sperm. Each sperm will be haploid. In this slide, we are looking at a oogonium. This oogonium is going to produce one egg. Three of these cells will fuse to form polar bodies, therefore leaving one dominant cell that's called an egg. In this slide, we have a haploid sperm and a haploid egg. These two cells will come together to form the zygote. This brings us back to Mendelian genetics and his crosses. A monohybrid cross will examine the inheritance of only one specific trait. A dihybrid cross would examine two traits and a trihybrid three. I would like you to perform this cross.
you should have received all heterozygote individuals. I would like for you to perform this cross. Your results should look something like this. Half heterozygotes and half homozygous recessive. A test cross is a mating between an individual of unknown genotype and a homozygous recessive individual. I would like for you to perform question one, two, and three. I will give you 30 seconds. If you are not finished, please press pause. These are the results of all three of those questions.